So you want to take pictures like this and this. I'm going to show you how and we're going to be using a Jedi Temple Guard mask that I just made as an example. Let's go. So today we're going to be doing a bit of photography. I'm going to be using this, my Jedi Temple Guard mask that I just made in my previous video. You can go check that out here if you want to see how I made it. But this is going to be our subject today, so let's get started. Now to take these photos today, I am going to be using this camera right here. It's a Canon 200D or Rebel SL2, I think it's also called. Now you can also use your smartphone if you don't have a DSLR. They're very good nowadays and you can actually go into the pro mode on the smartphone and actually get a lot of the settings that you can on a DSLR, but you're just not going to match the quality of a DSLR when it comes to taking good pictures. Now I will be using Lightroom and Photoshop as well today, so if you don't have those, you can download free trials or try and find a program that is similar. But you can also tweak a lot of these settings on your phone and also when you're uploading to social media. One of the first things you need to consider is lighting. I like using a nice big window. I have a lovely big window here and as you can see, it puts a lot of light onto me. I have some lights above me too, but it lights me well enough and it's gonna light your product well enough if you don't have other lights to use. The second thing you need to consider is what you're gonna have behind your object. If it's gonna be white, you can use foam board like this and photograph something like that. But today I'm gonna to do something dark and then we're gonna be using uh, the editing software too to make that happen. Now, as you can see, I have this lovely bust and this is usually displaying my clone trooper armor, but I actually like using this to take photos of my helmets at the moment. And as you can see, it's a super professional setup. I have it sitting on my office chair and this is gonna be next to the window and you'll see how the light plays with the helmet when we do this. Of course, some of you might not be lucky enough to have a bust like this to photograph your helmets on. Um, but you can use things like poster tubes, anything that's going to prop up your helmet. I'm going to be editing most of the background out of this anyway, but you can paint a poster tube black and just photograph it on there just so it's something holding up that gives you a nice firm stable thing. I like using this because it's nice and stable and I like showing a bit of the torso that it sits on. But of course just play with your own setup and how that works for you. So I've got the helmet set up here on the bus and we've got that big window and the spots providing a lot of good light. You can see on this side, we've got some really nice light lighting this side of the helmet. And I like doing it like this because it shows up so much contrast on the helmet rather than just lighting it from the front. If I do something like that, it just blows out the helmet and you can't see any depth or anything. It just looks bad. So look how much better that looks already. But what I am gonna do is use this light to add a rim light on this side of the face. This will just highlight some of the details on this side that is in shadow. There you can see how it starts to kick details on this side of the face and I can move that around with the position and just pull out various things. We can up the brightness, move it further away or at the front or to the side, maybe higher, maybe lower. We just really wanna kick off. These gold highlights here are very nice to kick off. But let's take some images and see what we end up with. So one of the mistakes I see is people getting far too close to the object they're photographing. This is an example of photographing real close with my lens zoomed right back. And as you can see, it's got so much distortion, it just looks ridiculous and it doesn't look like how it appears in real life. By contrast, if I move back and zoom my lens right in, you get a much better representation of what that looks like. Now obviously you have to be careful. Um, I have a variable focus lens on my camera and that is an optical zoom, so I'm not compromising any kind of quality when I zoom in. If you're using a smartphone to take these pictures and it's a digital zoom, you'll start to notice a drop in quality. I'm sure if you've ever zoomed in on your phone, you'll notice that it gets all kind of grainy and horrible, especially with video. That's because it's a digital zoom rather than an optical zoom. Here are the two photos I took, one very close with it zoomed right back and one sitting further away with it zoomed in. And you can see the difference is just stark night and day with how it's portraying what we've made. I've taken some pictures that I'm pretty pleased with, so let's jump into the computer and we'll finish them up. So as you can see, I've opened this picture in Lightroom. As you can see, I've added it to the collection down here and that's where I edit all the helmets. So we wanna try and get a similar look to all these because I like them all to match. So there are a lot of settings in Lightroom you can change, we can crop it, we can adjust this. I'm actually gonna do this later because I actually do that in Photoshop and we're gonna get that the same size as all the others in Photoshop, so that's fine. What I wanna do here is just start tweaking uh, the settings. You can see we can adjust the exposure. I always shoot my pictures on my camera in the automatic setting, just cause for my quick workflow, it works the best and we can always adjust a little either way here when we get into Lightroom. But I think it's pretty good. I think I'm gonna adjust that right side over here when we go into Photoshop, just cause it's a little darker than I thought it would be. But what I wanna start doing is just playing with all this, you can see I can really show some of that white, bring down highlights, or bring down those whites, up the contrast a little bit. Always pump 
clarity, just because I think that looks really cool. And the good thing is about this, if we flip back to previous iterations of photos that I want to match, you can actually see the settings that I did on that over here. So I can actually have a look and see what I changed over here to get the look that I did here. So a little vibrance. The vibrance will pump the middle range of color saturation. It won't pump the full range. So it just gives us a little kick and we really want to start highlighting these, these gold things. They pop already pretty well. If I want to change the level of what that gold is, I can use these sliders here. We've got the hues here. So if you watch, if I do this, we can get it to look redder or more yellow. I just want to go a little bit to the yellow. Yeah, I mean, see all this editing is very, very subtle. And I'm also going to go down and do a little sharpen. This one is very important. So what we want to do is correct for the lens distortion that we have. So always we're going to move that. There shouldn't be any chromatic aberration. That's when you just get a little shift and a, around the edges. I don't know what it is exactly, but you get rid of it. And if I do the lens correction, you can see there's a slight bit of warping between what the lens can see and what's actual. And because this knows the lens that I'm using, if you want to know the lens I'm using and the makeup camera, there we go. It's just there, um, but it will just adjust for that based on what it knows about that lens. And we can add some vignetting. I usually add a little bit, but we're going to adjust a lot more of this in Photoshop when we get there. I should be happy with that. It's pretty. I can adjust this. Where's my center line? That's the center line. The center line's pretty damn spot on, actually. That's right down the middle of the helmet, so that's great. I don't know why it looks a little skew with. I don't think it is. But that's great, we don't need to go into that. Right, so now let's jump over into Photoshop. So here we are, I've jumped into Photoshop, and as you can see, I've loaded that previous photo, because this is actually the one we're going to match. So I'm just gonna drop in our new photo. There we go, and you can see, ratio's a bit off. So let's just, there you go. I have to make him a little smaller, you know. But of course, I just want to try and match this the best possible. And of course, this helmet is a little smaller and a bit thinner. So maybe we do want to make him just a little smaller. Just to match that. There we go. So. There we go. That's what I want to do. So. Let's look at making this look a bit better, shall we? We'll leave this guy here because we don't actually need him. First thing I actually want to do is go in and cut out the background. I'm going to draw around the helmet. Um, there's many ways to do this, but I like using the lasso tool. So I'm just going to speed forward and we're going to do that. So now that's outlined, I just go down here and we're going to hit the mask and we create a layer mask. Of course, we can see that one behind. We don't want that. We just want something nice and dark. There we go, looking much better. Now the good thing is about if, we, if we're using the mask tool, if there's any areas that look a bit weird, we can actually go in and change those. Let's grab a brush, make sure we're on the mask layer. And anything that might look a bit weird, I can just kind of sketch in and change that. Yeah, that's much better. Anything that looks a bit funny. And because I photographed it on that chair, it's actually giving us a very nice thing behind. And it doesn't actually matter because it's so dark if the things pop out. Okay, so you can actually make this a very clean, realistic looking edge. There we go. Already looking a whole lot better. Now, the only thing I do to help disguise all of this is I use a, a light brush. And all we're going to do is paint in down here, remove some of that, and that really blends that torso into the background. That's great. Love that. That's all done. Now, when it comes to correcting some of the things on the photo, the only thing I don't like is this section over here. Uh, this whole section's a bit too dark, so I think what I'm going to do is just bright up. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to duplicate my layer, so I've got a copy. If it goes wrong, we can just go back to that previous one. I'm going to use the dodge tool, mid-tones, and the exposure is very low. Make sure it's editable. 
And I'm just gonna gently paint on here. And maybe up the exposure a little bit, just so. There you go. Can you see? Just starting to brighten up that area a little bit. Now this isn't the final colour that I want this to be. We're gonna do a colour correction after this. It's a little bit too orange for my liking. But that just starts to bring that back a little bit. And make sure we zoom out, make sure we can see the overall effect that it's having. But I really like that. I think that's great. Now on my Instagram page, I have a bit of a theme going. Uh, my pictures tend to be quite dark and then they tend to have a blue tone to them. So what I do here is add a color correction. This is going to change the range of colors. So we're going to be changing the shadows. And what I do is I drop the shadows, can you see, they go to blue, but I drop those a little, and I drop this one a little, and there we go, we start to get a lovely blue tone of the shadows. I usually do it to the mid-tones too, just take them down ever so slightly. We can always play with this later, we can also play with it when we upload it to social media too. And then for the highlights, I just knock them towards the yellow, and a smidge towards the red. And you can see, it's an on off, it gives a much better more pleasing tone for me and the good thing is this layer is also maskable if you look over here uh, it's got a mask on it too so if I wanted to if we grab a brush I could actually mask where that is so if I want to bring back this gold to be a little bit more yellow all I've got to do is sketch that on here and that's actually working quite nicely on here I really quite like that oh yeah look at that look brings that right back yes 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 much better. We just sketch that gold back. That on and off. And there we go. I am completely happy with this. It matches the one we were doing before. If I quickly group these. Can we able to see? There's a previous and there's a new one. In fact I might even be able to run like a little desaturation on this. Just uh, out of curiosity. See, we can go right down, right up. I think coming just down a little bit is much better. Yeah, yeah, that's looking, that's looking rather great. So there we go. There's a quick version of how I edit in Lightroom and Photoshop to get this look. I think this looks fantastic. Now let's jump back to the real me. So there we go, I'm really happy with how the final result turned out. It looks great and I have no qualms with posting this on social media. And you, if you've been on my social media, you would have seen it already, you would have posted it already. If you want to see some more videos about how to photograph your props and costumes, I did do another video of how I photographed my 20 pound lightsaber from my 20 pound lightsaber challenge. You can go check that out over here. And that goes into how I set up this shot and how I photographed that saber. So go check that out if you haven't already. If you did like this video, please consider subscribing. Your support means a lot to me. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.